3, I think, is where we quit. 19 and verse 3, we'll go over it anyway, regardless. John 19 and 3, the murder of Christ. That's what we're talking about, the murder of Christ, the absolute murder of our Lord. Kai, Erkontal, Pros, Auton, Kai, Elegon, Kare, Ho, Basileus, Ton, Eudeon, Kai, Edadosan, Auto, Rapismato, Mata, that is. And they kept on coming, look at that, for themselves. They kept on coming for themselves. Now, tell me a little bit about that. They kept on coming for themselves. Look at that. Erconto. Brother Roger, tell me about the action of that verb there. Okay. Uh, what person? Middle voice. Okay, what person? Uh, third person. Plural. plural. Third person, plural. So that is what? They. Okay. Okay, it's in what tense? Uh, in perfect. Okay, now what's in mode? What mode? Middle voice. Okay, it's middle voice in what mode? Indicative. Indicative mode. So tell me about how this should be translated. They did it on their own volition. Yeah. Um, but with, uh, with intensity. Well, they, they kept on coming of their own volition and for their own, their own, their, for themselves. They wanted to do this. Each person here, every person in this mob wanted to do this. But personally, okay, toward him, and they kept on saying, Hail the King of the Jews. Hail the King of the Jews. All right? Now here we are, we're mocking Jesus. We're mocking him. This is a, we're going to degrade Jesus before we kill him. We're going to degrade him. Hail the King of the Judeans. And they kept on giving to him rapismata. Rapismata, uh, it comes from rapizo on page 359 in the, in the analytical Greek lexicon. It literally, a rapizo, a rapis is a rod or a cane. Okay? Now, a rod or a cane. Now, in, in China, what did they do to people when you get out of order? What do they call that? They're caned. They take a, like a bamboo cane or a rod or something and they beat them across the back with it, okay? They beat them and beat them and beat them. That's what you call caning somebody. Now, this word here can mean to, uh, to slap or to beat or to cane. To slap or to beat or to cane. And it means right in the face. They hit him in the face. Now, let me tell you... How many of you ever been slapped real hard? Anybody ever been slapped? Boy, you people are lucky. <laughs> it, I'd rather somebody hit me than slap me almost, wouldn't you? A slap really burned. It's a terrible thing. But that's what they were doing. They were slapping, beating him with rods, and punching him. And as we will see later on, after Jesus rose from the dead, some of his disciples did not recognize him. Why? Why? Why didn't they recognize him? After he'd been murdered and beaten and used for a punching bag, why didn't they recognize him? Roger? Physically, he's going to be bearing all those marks and distortions on his body. Jesus bore the beatings after he was resurrected. We, when we're resurrected, we won't carry our scars today. I've got road maps all over me where I've been cut up and chopped up with operations and things. I won't have any of that. I'll have a glorified body without all of that. But Jesus, why is he going to carry the scars? So every time we see him, we can remember what he did for us. And they did not recognize him because his, his appearance had changed so much after he was beaten. The scars were there. Remember what happened when, when uh, uh, Thomas would not believe? He said, I won't believe until I what? Until I see the scars in his hands. This was in the wrist. And in his feet and in his side. So what does that tell you? When he rose from the dead, he had the scars. 
And when he rose and when he saw Thomas, he said, Come here, Thomas, thrust your hand in my side. Stick your fingers through these holes. So did he have them? Was his appearance changed? Was his appearance changed? Yes, it was. All right. The king of the Jews. And they kept on giving to him rapismata, successive and many blows. Many blows and slaps and canings. 19 and verse 4 now. 19 verse 4. Kai, exalthane, Pauline, exo, ho, pilatos. Pilatos. Kai, lege, atois, ide, ago, himen, alton, exo, hina, note, hote, udemion, aition, urisco, in alto. Now here we have Pontius Pilate declared Jesus innocent seven times. Seven is the number of what? Number of perfection. Seven times he declared that he was innocent. He tried to release him. Now why did Pontius Pilate have to go out? And he went forth again outside the Pontius a pilot, and he says to them, why did he go outside and meet these Jews? If they went inside, they wouldn't be ready for Passover. They could not, they would pollute themselves religiously, and they could not take the Passover. Did Jesus take the Passover earlier this week? That's how your Catholicism gets mixed up. They have people, I mean, many preachers preach that Jesus was, was crucified on Friday. He was not crucified on Friday. All the historical data that we have in history says Jesus was crucified on Wednesday. And he was crucified before the Passover, wasn't he? Yet he took the Passover with his disciples, didn't he? He took the Passover early. A lot of times people just miss this boat altogether. These are very integral points of the Passover week, but they ignore it. There are some people that are going back to historical data and beginning to bring this out. Chuck Missler is one of them. Uh, several different, some of the leading speakers are going back and saying, hey, you know, this was, besides that, Jesus said he would be in the ground in the grave three days and three nights. How in the world is he going to be in the grave three days and three nights when he's crucified on Friday and he raised on Sunday morning? They say, well, it's a partial days. That's not what it says. It was a type of when Jonah was in the belly of the whale. If you believe it's a whale, it was a great fish, dog of some sort, whether it was a Leviathan or whatever he was in, and he was dead. Jonah was dead. A lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say, well, a person could live in a, in a whale's belly. You know, people have been found in whale's bellies after three days and so on and so forth, trying to prove that Jonah was alive in the whale's belly. But he wasn't alive in the whale's belly. They'll read the rest of the Bible. Read the rest of the story. It says he was dead. He cried out from Sheol, which is the place of departed spirits. And not only that, we try to make things feasible for people to believe. When Moses, or not Moses, but Aaron threw his rod down, it became, in all the translations, a serpent. But it did not become a serpent. What did it become? A dragon. A dragon, a leviathan, a big leviathan. It's pretty easy to believe that that rod might come a become a snake. You know, same shape, but a giant dragon? And when Janus and Jambres threw the rods down, what'd they become? Giant dragons. That's what the Bible says, but that's not what the translations say. When Jonah was swallowed by the leviathan, the whale, the great fish, or whatever it was, look in the back of your... Look in the back of your Bibles where your maps are. <clears throat> All right, this is not a very good map, but just look at it. Now, in this is Palestine. This is, is uh, Canaan land right here, okay? Right over here. Now, where did Jonah get on the ship, and where was he going? Tarshish. Okay, he got on the ship where? All right, right over here. Okay, he got on the ship Joppa. Okay, Joppa's right over here. He got on the ship and he went towards Spain, which is down here in Europe. 
about 2,500 miles away, give or take a few hundred miles. Okay, so he's going that way. And then we have a great storm. You watching? Are you looking at that, girls and boys? Yeah. We have a great storm out here in the Mediterranean. And uh, Jonah is down in the bottom of the ship, and everybody else is crying out to their gods, begging their gods to save their lives, because they believe that the Leviathans, remember all of the... All of the legends said that there were great leviathans that caused these, they were big devil, supernatural devil dragons in the ocean that caused these big storms. That's what they believed. So they were crying out to their gods that they would save them from this great le leviathanical storm. They went down there and found Jonah, and Jonah was asleep. He said, why aren't you crying out to your Lord? Well, he said, I'm the reason for the storm. Well, what are we going to do about it? Cry out to your Lord. And he said, well, I can tell you why I'm in trouble, because I'm not going the right direction. I was told to go up here to Nineveh, way up yonder. And he went where? He came from, where did he come from? Around Nazareth, okay? And he was going the opposite direction almost. So he said, well, the only way you're going to save your lives is to throw me in the ocean. And they didn't want to do it. And they said, well, what's this Jehovah God of yours? He said, I serve Jehovah. He, well, what's he going to think about us when we kill you? you got to do it. And so finally they did it, and the ocean just stilled. When he hit the water, when they threw him in the ocean, the ocean just was like glass, just stilled. And then the, the giant thing, fish, whatever it was, swallowed him, and he died. He died. He was drowned, and the fish swallowed him. He was drowned. He was dead. These theologians better get their acts together because he was a dead man. So the fish... He starts crying out to God from Sheol, which is the place of the departed spirits. That's Hades, or, you know, paradise. He had gone to paradise. And he said, well, if you let me go back, Lord, I will do this, you know. And so the Lord said, okay, I'm going to transport you. Now, where's Nineveh? Hundreds of miles up here. And we're out here in the Mediterranean Sea. So, two ways that that fish has to get to Nineveh. Okay? Which two ways you got? Can the fish fly? Is it a flying fish? Maybe. Look over there. How many miles has it got to fly over there to Nineveh? Long way. Long way. Across land. But look how many, if he swims in the ocean, how far does he have to go? He's got to go all the way around the Mediterranean, all the way around Africa. He's got to come up into the Indian Ocean and in the Persian Gulf and then go up the Euphrates River. Now, how many thousands of miles is that in three days? Thousands of miles. You could, drive, you could go from New York to, to uh, London. I think it's probably less miles. I'm sure it is. And that fish swam that far? God could have made him a super, supersonic submarine. Yeah, he could have. God could have transported him over the air and made him fly. You know, if it was a Leviathan, the Leviathan supposedly had wings and they could fly. That's where you go and you see these Chinese dragons, you know, when they're having all these festivals, they have these dragons with wings on them. They're going around with a dragon head. That's a, that's a picture of a Leviathan. Now, maybe this was a Leviathan, but Jonah was dead. When he spit him out on the ground, three days later, he was alive. He came back to life. Okay? All of these things we think about. Okay? Let's get our acts together. Think. One of the old Baptist preachers once time said, think, it's a good trick if you can do it. Start thinking when you study your Bible, think about it. How many, I have never heard a sermon preached on what I just told you. Have you? About the trip of Jonah? I have never heard anybody preach that. They just, just acted like like, here's Joppa, go out here, and there is Nineveh over here. That's not the way it was. We've got to go all the way around there if we're going to swim. We've got to fly over to the water, or over the land, if we fly. And I have no problem with God getting him there either way. But it took three days, and Jonah was dead three days, okay? Now, Jesus is going to be dead three days in the grave. Three days in the grave. Not part of three days. Three days he's going to be in the grave. All right? 
And he went forth again outside Pilate because he, they didn't want to pollute themselves religiously. Here we got murderers. Thou shalt not keep on committing murder. That's what it says. Isn't it? That's what it says in Hebrew in the, in the law. Thou shalt not commit false, bear false witness. Did they do, were they doing this? They were going to murder and they were going to bear false witness and they're going to try this man. Now, Remember, every time that Pilate announced that Jesus was innocent, that they should have been crucified. In the law of Moses, it says that if a man brings false charges against someone and they find out that they are innocent and they're proven innocent by an impartial judge, which Pontius Pilate was, that they are to be Crucified or not crucified, but whatever they called for, whatever the mob called for, these false witnesses called for, they were supposed to have it done to them so that there would be fear in the land of Israel against this. When Jesus went in there and whipped and told those people in the, when he cleansed the temple, when he went in that area and he whipped those people and turned over the, the benches and said, your religion is bankrupt, you are, I'm taking the, the reins away from you and I'm going to give it to my little church, basically is what he's saying. Now, those that were guilty of being dishonest stewards were supposed to be whipped and taken out and crucified or stoned. You, the word bankrupt, you know what that bankrupt word bankrupt means? It means broken bench. They had their benches set up in the temple area. Not in the temple itself, but in the temple area where they were doing all this money changing. That was baloney too. That was just another way to make money on religion. This is what we call religious panhandlers. Okay? Religious panhandlers. That place was full of religious panhandlers. They were selling uh, sacrifices to people and making them change money to buy for it. They wouldn't accept their sacrifices they brought. They would denounce that they were unclean, imperfect or something, so they'd have to buy more. And people coming from all over, and they wanted to have a sacrifice on the day, on the, uh, on the Passover. They, they wanted to have a sacrifice. Well, Jesus said, you're all bankrupt. In the pagan temples, they had banks in every pagan temple. And one of the priests would be a banker, and he would take money in, and he would pay them interest on it, so they'd make money on their money. And not only that, but it had to be there. The whole religious system of that whole county or state, whatever they're in, depended on them to be honest. If they were dishonest, they broke the bench, they whipped a man, and they took it out, impaled him, crucified him, stoned him, whatever. Uh, what, in that area, whatever the capital punishment was, that's what happened to him. And that's what Jesus said to them, you're bankrupt. You need to be crucified. Well, they turned the tables on him, didn't they? They turned the tables on him. <clears throat> now Pontius Pilate goes outside, condo not condoning, but accommodating these people. Not condoning, but accommodating them and their religious baloney. They should have been crucified. And he says to them, behold, I bring to you him. Look at this. Behold, that's a little interjection there. Ago, I bring, first person singular, present indicative active, to ye. That's deity plural, second person pronoun. Him, accusative singular masculine, third person pronoun. Okay? That's who's receiving the action, isn't it, Brother Roger? That out tone. Outside. Here we have a little preposition of place. Outside. I'm going to bring him outside in order that ye may know that nothing crime. Ition. Ition. Look at that word ition there. That means there's no material evidence against, against this man. There's no modus operandi either. There's no MO. There's nothing. This man is innocent. You are guilty. He is innocent. You ought to be crucified. And he is innocent. And seven times he declared him. There's no charge. There's no indictment. There's no incrimination I find in him. No fault, no crime I find in him. You know, there's songs that, there's different Christian, what we call gospel songs that, that quote this verse. I find no fault in him. 
I find no fault on him. He did not find any sin, any fault in him. He's again declaring him innocent in thee. And when he declares him innocent, what is he doing? He's declaring them guilty. The murder of Jesus, the murder of Christ, the murder of the King of Israel. XL thing, 19.5. XL thing. Un ho Jesus. Exo foron ton a Stephanon kai to tor furon. Hemation kai lege altois edu ho anthropos. Therefore, we have a little particle there, page 295, which is not written in your book. Therefore, the Jesus, he came forth. Outside, exo, again outside, they didn't want to pollute them. Bearing and wearing, bearing and wearing the thorny wreath, the thorny crown. A continuum. Literally, it means made of thorns. A wreath, a crown. Now, there's all kinds of different explanations of what this crown of thorns was. Uh, some people say it was a thorn bush that that uh, Moses uh, saw burning. Remember that? But we know that that was not those were great big thorns, was it, Brother Roger? What was that thorn bush according to the book of Genesis? It's a, it's a Exodus. It's a blackberry bush. So this is not a blackberry bush thorns, okay? Uh, it's some type of thorns. They have some very large thorns, and I got some when I was in Israel. They had thorny spikes on them like that. You see pictures of Jesus with this thing on him, with this crown of thorns on Maybe that's what it was, a crown of thorns like that. Uh, if it in true, true was the same thorns that, that uh, the burning bush were on, then it was a blackberry bush. But most people today think it was the, the, the real strong thorny bush, long thorns on it. Whichever one, it's a crown. The word Stephanon, Stephanos, it comes from Stephanos, okay? That's by crown by right of birth, okay? Now Jesus... Uh, Pontius Pilate announced that this was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Did he not? You know what he did when he, when he announced that? What did he do? What did he say about that? What was his findings in court? Every word he said has great evidence. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. What did he say when he said that? Don't just run over it. What did he say? Brother Corey, you have any idea? This is Jesus of Nazareth, the legitimate heir to the throne of Israel. Did you get that? Write her down. That's very important. Pontius Pilate is slapping these people. They're, they beat up Jesus and they, they beat him and slapped him and cursed him and everything else. But Pontius Pilate is defending him. Pontius Pilate says, the man you are murdering is your king. He's your legitimate king by le legitimate heirship. He was born to be king. Jesus told Pontius Pilate, he said, for this purpose I was born. Who was his father? This earthly father. We know that Joseph wasn't his literal father, but who was this earthly father? Joseph, which should have been on the throne of Israel. He was, on, he was the right lineage. We have an Ishmaelite Esau cross-up hybrid on the throne of Israel, which wasn't supposed to be there. Esau was not, the, was not the chosen son. He was not the heir. It was Jacob. The, his, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. This is the king of Israel. This is the real king of Israel right here. The real king of Israel. The one they're going to murder. The murderer of the real king of Israel. And Pontius Pilate in so many ways is telling them, you are murdering your king, the, the real heir to the throne of Israel. This read now what he said. Now he's crowned with thorns in thee. This word Stephanos here, that means you're, you're, you're crowned by right of birth. 
You're born to this. That's what Jesus said. I was born to this purpose. And the purple, the porphyron. Porphyron, porphyron. There's a word, a purpura murax. It's a little uh, a s- species of a shellfish that has this scarlet purple dye that comes out. Remember Lydia? the seller of purple and purple cloth. She sold the dye and she sold the purple cloth, which was royalty. That Only rich people could afford this. So they put a purple scarlet robe on him, which said that he was king. Okay, And he says to them, Behold a man. In, in Latin is ec- echo homo. Behold a man. If you go over there, where you go through the stations across, you will go in Jerusalem, you'll say, it'll say, Echo Homo, behold the man. Right where Pontius Pilate brought him out and said, Behold the man. Behold your king. Behold the king of Israel. Behold the Messiah. You bunch of wretches and liars and thieves, behold the man you're about to murder. Here's your real king. The real king. The genuine king. The legitimate king. 19 and verse 6. <clears throat> Hote, un edon, auton, hoi akerios, kai hoi hiperete, ek krog gason, lagontes, staruson, staruson, lege, autois, ho pilotos, labete, auton, himes, kai. Staru sate, ego gar uk, hurisco en alto aition. When therefore they saw him, now watch these dogs, watch these ravenous wolves. When a wolf smells blood, you know what happens to him? He goes crazy. He's got to go lap it. When a wolf smells blood, he's got to have a taste of it. When therefore they saw him, the high priest, and the uh, sergeant of arms, the deacons, the attendants, the underroars, what it literally says, he shouted and screamed, saying, look at this, nomine plural masculine, present participle, active. They kept on saying, they kept on saying, over and over and over again, They kept on saying over and over again, Staruson, you crucify, second person singular, first aorist imperative active. Imperative mode is what? Brother Corey, imperative mode. That is a command, isn't it? It's a demand, a command. You crucify, you crucify, second person singular, first aorist imperative active. You crucify, you crucify, he says to them. The pilot, you take him. You, you all, you take him. And you crucify him. You need to be crucified is what he's saying. You do it. For I not find in him a crime. There is no indictment. There is no no modus operandi. There is no crime in this man. You ought to be crucified. When he says this every time, he's indicting them of murder. He's indicting them with lying and perjury every time. But we don't. But they, they, do you think it's bothering them at all? In Pontius Pilate's letter, Jesus addresses him as "O Prince of the Earth." O Prince of the Earth. I think that he was using a uh, Hebraism when he said that. The word prince means what? Brother Roger? Um, prince. Contentious or fighter, warrior? Warrior. Sire, sire is what it is. Sire. Is, do you agree with that, uh, Pamela? All right. So you got second to that motion. Prince or warrior? Yes, he was a warrior. He was a prince of the earth. He was a prince. He was a ruler right there. And what did he tell him? There's nothing you can do to save me when the time comes. Now the time has come. The prince, the one that was there, 
the, the ruler that was over this rabble that he couldn't control them. They were murderers. They had the smell of blood. They were ravening wolves. The Jews called the uh, Gentiles dogs. Dogs. You know what a dog is? A dog is a hybrid wolf. When in the Acts, the seventh chapter, pa Stephen was preaching to Israel, preaching to the Sanhedrin court. And now they are going to commit a crime right there. It gets worse. They get, get, the Sanhedrin gets worse and worse and worse. They don't get better. They get worse. Now, Pontius Pilate had told them, you crucify him. I'm not going to do it. You crucify him. And they're demanding. If, if I read Pontius Pilate's letter to you again, you'll find out that the whole praetorium was shaking and the ground was vibrating and the whole place was just echoing with their voices screaming, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And they said, he said, I find no fault in him. And he washed his hands. I said, I wash my hand of this man's blood. And they said, what? Let his blood be upon us and our children. And has it? How many million Jews have died since that time because of what happened here? Yet we know in the end that God will save them, won't we? Remember the book of Revelation and the Quran, the opposites. The Quran says that Jesus is coming back to do what? To kill all the Jews and to kill all the Christians. That's Jesus come back to kill all the Jews and kill all the Christians. Now the book of Revelation says that Jesus is coming back to save Israel and to take his people unto himself. There's opposite stories there, aren't they? Which one are you going to believe? The one with validity, with validity or are you going to believe the other? All right. I find no crime in him. I find no modus operandi in him. I find no guilt, no indictment. He's innocent again, seventh time. He's innocent. Now in verse 19 and verse 7. Apocrithason. Auto hoi eduoi. He may no moan, echo men, kai kata ton no moan. O file, apothenein, hote huion, theo hiapton epoeson. They answered. They were called to answer him, the Jews. They were called to answer him, the Jews. Now that they were called as second person or third person plural. First heiress, indicative passive. Alto, what, what is that? What is that alto? That's a third person pronoun, isn't it? Which is him. Okay? But what do we have in, what should we put in front of that him? Brother Roger? What, ca what case is this in? It's either nominative, genitive, obnative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, or vocative. It's one of those, isn't it? It's his singular. Okay? It's a second declension ending, okay? We're getting, we're getting her down now. Dative, singular, masculine, third person pronoun. They answered to him, the Jews. To him is who? Pontius Pilate. The Jews. Their very names. Jesus was a lion of the tribe of what? Judah, which they received the name of the Jewish name from him, Judah. Jews comes from Judah, okay? Now, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. We, nomon, law. Nomon, look at that, accusative, singular, masculine. Paper bleeds little, doesn't it? Paper bleeds little. You can write anything down. You can write a declaration of war, and that paper is not going to bleed, but people are going to bleed. Their, their law that they had, that told them thou shalt not commit a murder thou shalt not commit perjury they were breaking it all weren't they they were breaking all of it the Sanhedrin court was established by whom remember that uh, Pamela who, who, did the, who established the Sanhedrin court way back yonder in history you remember who it was Corey what's his name there Roger Jethro Jethro which is Moses' father-in-law. He said, pick out men among you that can't be bribed, that will not take a bribe, that will not tell a lie, that cannot be 
touched by immorality. And you choose those people and you get 70 of them and that's the court. So Moses wouldn't have to do all the work. He's going he's to establish the Sanhedrin court and the Lord allowed him to do that. So we have the Sanhedrin court. But this Sanhedrin court, there were very few men on this Sanhedrin court that couldn't be bribed that would not kill and murder. All we have, we continue to have, first person for present indicative active from echo. Can you conjugate present indicative active for me? Verbs, conjugated. O-A-S-A, O-M-A-D-U-C-A, okay? There it is. And this is echoman, isn't it? This is what? First person plural, present indicative active. We continue to have a law they didn't believe it. They didn't practice it. And according to that law, look at that, kata tone nomon. That's accusative singular masculine. And according to the law, he ought to die. According to the law, they ought to die. To tell you the truth, they ought to die. Because the son of God, heir of God, this word here is the firstborn of God. You know what they were saying? Same thing Jesus said. He said that he is born of God. That God literally is his father. Islam says, oh, how ridiculous for Allah to have a son. To, to lower himself down to come and cohabit with a woman to have a son. But you know what? The very Jehovah God of the Old Testament means the one who shall become. John 1, 14 is the fulfillment of that Jehovah God. God title, Kaihologo Sarsaganato, and the Word, or the Jehovah flesh, he became. And he dwelt among us. God came and became flesh so we could redeem him. And the Lord's Supper, when you take the Lord's Supper, what does the Lord's Supper re represent? It's not a sacrament, is it? Does it add salvation to you in any way? No. What is it? It's a remembrance. You remember him. The broken body. The beats, the beatings that he had right here, and the blood that he shed, the broken body and the and broken bread, and the blood that he shed in the cup. Those things represent what Jesus did right here. Because Son of God, He Himself, He Ato. This is what we call, this is accusative singular masculine, third person pronoun, reflexive pronominal adjective describing him. He himself, God he himself he made. Third person singular, first heiress, and dignity of active. 19 and verse 8 now. Hote, un, akusen, ho palatos, tuton, ton logon, malon, efo besan. Now the word staros there. See that word staros? Go back to that for a moment. Starosate. He said to them, Star, that comes from Saro. And he said, you crucify him. Now let's look at the word crucifixion. You know the Jehovah Witness brethren, you know what they say about this? They said that he was crucified on a stake. That he was not crucified on a cross at all, it was a stake. Now the word Staros does come from the word stake. But it goes all the way back to where? Nineveh. Nineveh. In Nineveh they were crucifying people on a sharpened stake where they would set them on top of it and slowly that sharpened stake would go up in their body and rupture their organs and they would die a very painful lingering death. But the Romans when they wanted to do this that wasn't that was too fast. So they took a guy and they nailed his hands up here like this and they nailed his feet down here like this. He's up like this with his feet nailed together on the stake. That's what it means the stake. It's stake. But it evolved. In the crucifixion, the staking evolved. They, the man lived too long. Here he is like this. What actually kills a person on the cross? What do they die of? Suffocation. A guy could probably eight or ten hours and he would die on this cross, on this staros. So they made a key type cross like this. Nailed hand there, nailed hand there, nailed foot there, nailed foot there. And still he died too quick. Still he died too quick. So then they 
said, let's just take the staros and let's put a beam across it. Nail a hand there and hand there, put a seat right there and, and a platform for, to nail his feet. Now he's going to be in a lot of pain for a long time. <clears throat> in a lot of pain for a long time, he'll die a long and lingering death. And that's the way Jesus was crucified right there with that cross. That's Staros. It evolved in that because they sometimes people would live more than a week on a cross. And they'd leave them there naked, people walking in and out of the city. This was the main gate where they crucified them. So they'd see these criminals dying and say, I don't want to die like that. I don't want to die like that. Public execution, you know, I don't want to die like that. I'm going to be a good boy. Well, that's what they called for. Now Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate had a tremendous amount of power in his hands. When therefore he heard the Pilate, this, the word, the testimony, more he was afraid. More he was a cause to, refraid, to be afraid. And that verse back to chapter 18, verse 38. More he was caused to be afraid. Pontius Pilate in his letter, by the way, that Pontius Pilate's letter is one of the most historically foundational documents that we have. He, his letter was quoted all over histories. Romans, Jews, everybody you could think of quoted it. Handed down for generations. Eusebius quoted it, you know, years and years later, quoted Pontius Pilate's letter. Josephus quoted it. All of these people quoted Pontius Pilate's letter. It really existed. It really was what it says. Pontius Pilate did not want to crucify Jesus. He did not want to. He said they have are going to crucify the Lord of glory. He believed that. He convicted his father-in-law, which was who? Who was Pontius Pilate's father-in-law? Tiberius Caesar. Tiberius' illegitimate or daughter by a concubine was his wife, Pontius Pilate's wife. She was a granddaughter, literally, of Augustus Caesar. He convinced his father-in-law that Jesus literally needed to be announced to have been a god among the Roman gods. That I believe that he was a god. And Tiberius Caesar believed it. Tiberius Caesar protected the young Christians from whom? Wasn't the Roman Empire at that time. Who was, who was the first people to persecute the Christians? Jews. The Jews. He protected them against the Jews. Matter of fact, they, they got, their whole nation got splattered all over, didn't it? That's what we call a diaspora because of that. Go on a little bit further, 19 and verse 9. 19 and verse 9. <coughs> Kai... Ace Elthane, Ace Tone Praetorion, Paulin, Kai, Legay, Tone Asu, Pothan, A C Ho De Asus, Apocrisian, Uk Edokin Auto. And he entered into the Praetorium again. And he says to Jesus, He still won't talk to Jesus, isn't he? How in the world am I going to get him off with all this rabble? How, what in the world can I do to get, set him free? And he says to Jesus, from where are you? But the Jesus answered not. He gave to him. Jesus didn't answer him. 19 and verse 10 now. Lege un altoho pilotos emoi u lales. Uk oidas hote exusion echo apolise si kai exusion echo staruse si. And he says, therefore, to him, the pilot, Pontius Pilate, do you know that for many, many years the school of higher critics said that Pontius Pilate, there was no, no proof of his existence? And finally, when they got to kicking around over there in, in Caesarea, they found a stone that had, and I've seen that stone, I've touched that stone, that said 
Pontius Pilate was a governor of Judea at that time. And he says, therefore, him, the Pilate, to me, not you speak. Why don't you speak to me? Don't you understand that exousion, remember what exousion means? Exousion. Page 146 in this little analytical Greek lecture. Page 146, it tells you what exousion means. Do you remember what exousion means, Brother Roger? It means the authority of the king or the most powerful authority. Okay, let's just look at 146. I wish you had your little books with you. 146. Efficient energy, liberty, license, authority, rule, dominion, jurisdiction. Potentate, power, right, authority, full power. Prerogative, privilege. Privilege to exercise power without any limits whatsoever. Unlimited power. A process independent of any other powers. Right then, at that moment, Pontius Pilate says, I have the power of life and death in, in my hands, in your life and death in my hands. What am I going to do? Help me. You know? What am I going to do? Help me save you. But Jesus had already told him, according to Pontius Pilate's letter, O Prince of the Earth, when it comes time that they bring me before you, there is nothing that you can do to save my life. Because to this reason I was born. He said, why don't you speak to me? La lace. Why don't you speak to me? And he says, lego, Lege, that is, third person singular, present indicative, active. Oase, omenete, usiane, remember? Oase. And he says to him, therefore the pilot, to me not you speak. Now the verse one is lego, which is equi equivalent to the Hebrew word the bar, isn't it? Which means to set roads, ro words in a row, or soldiers in a row, or fence posts in a row, or whatever. You put your words in a row so somebody else can understand what you're saying. And then he said, La Lace. Okay? Remember, O Ace A. Ace. You speak. Why don't you speak? Now, this word, La Leo, that means what? You remember that one now, Brother Corey? La Leo? The difference between La Leo and Lego? La Leo means to use human mode of speech lips, tongue, teeth, mouth, palate, voice box. Not, not you understand? Look at that word. Can't you see with your mind's eye? Don't you understand? Haven't you seen a crucifixion before? Can't you see that authority I have to release Apolise, to send you away, and authority I have to crucify you? Was Pontius Pilate telling the truth right here? halfway Pontius Pilate did have the whole authority in the land but guess what he was being terrorized this was a terrorist act do you realize this was a terrorist act why don't we speak out against some of the things that Islam does in the world why isn't it more why don't we publicize this because of fear and terror terrorism remember what the Muhammad said, put terror in their hearts. Terrorize them. Make them afraid. Make them, when you speak words and you do actions, they won't even speak back. They're so afraid to talk back. Too afraid to talk back. And they were terrorizing Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate didn't have enough men to contain this rabble, did he? According to Pontius Pilate, in his letter, he didn't have enough people to control his bunch. So yes, he had power, but did he have power? Who had the power right here? The prince and power of the air. Who's the prince and power of the air? Old Satan himself. Satan was in control, wasn't he? Satan would have loved to kill Jesus and put him in the ground, and he never raised again, wouldn't he? He was behind every one of these evil spirits that were in these people slapping and beating and 
and crucifying him. He was behind all of those people, all of those acts. Some of these soldiers were just doing what they had to do. 19 and verse 11. Apocrythe Echo, Echase, Exousion, Cot, Emoi, Udemion, A, May, Ain, Dedomenon, Soe, Anathane, Dia, Tuto, Ho, Parados, Me, Soe, Maisona, Hamartion, Eke. Roger, could you go out and tell those kids not to ride their things out here till we get through? <clears throat> and he answered to him the Jesus not you keep on having authority against me you don't have any authority against me you, you don't have it right now look at that word not you keep on having look at that second person singular imperfect indicative active you don't you are not con you aren't co in control right now Pontius Pilate you are not in control you were in control yesterday. You were in control yesterday, the day before, last week, last month, but not today. The demons of hell are in control right now. Against me. Nothing except it kept on being, having been to you from above. God gave you authority yesterday and the day before and the week before, but today you don't have any control. Today, Pontius Pilate, you're going to have to give in from these terrorists. You're going to have to give in to the terrorists, and you're going to have to do what they want. Therefore, dia tuto, because of this, the having delivered to me to you greater sin he has. The ones that delivered me to you, they are the one that have the greater sin, the greatest sin, the greatest sin. One more verse, and I'm going to turn you loose on the world. It's a long verse, 19 and verse 12. Do you, are you enjoying looking at the real word from the depths of it with all the customs and, the, and everything going in it? Ek tuto, ho palatos, ex ethe, apolise, auto, ho, hoi de, eudeoi, ekras gazon, lagontes, yon tuton, Apolia, Apolises, Uk, A, Philos, Tu, Kai, Seros, Pas, Ho, Basilia, Ialton, Poion, Antelege, Ton, Kai, Sari. <clears throat> Seven times Pontius Pilate tried to release Jesus. From this or out of this, the pilot, he kept on seeking to release him. He kept on trying to do it through all of this. Now, this is the inspired word of God in it. This is the last gospel written. And John, the apostle, is trying to tell us that Pontius Pilate did everything he could against these religious terrorists. But the ones Jews, they kept on shouting. Third person pearl, imperfect, indicative, active. Saying, they kept on saying, if this one you may release, not you are the friend of Caesar. We're going to lie to write a letter to Caesar, which was Tiberius. Is that in law? <laughs> Too bad. But right now we have the case before him of a what we call a civil war. We have an anarch we have a group of anarchists. Now, if he doesn't release Jesus, I mean, if he does release Jesus, he's going to cause a revolt. They're going to kill Jesus anyway. What did they do to Stephen? It didn't get better, did it? When Stephen got up there and condemned the Sanhedrin court for killing the Lord God, King of Glory, they, were, they stoned him. And who, who was the one that, that delivered the edict, the sentence? Who was the one that did that? We got a history of it in, in, in Acts, the seventh chapter. That was Paul the Apostle. His name was Saul at that time. He gave the death sentence, and the Jews killed him, not, not the Roman government. Before, you know, they wouldn't kill Jesus. They were afraid to kill Jesus. But now Stephen was a little fry, so they killed him. 
they had become more rebellious. That's why they got run over. That's why their temple got destroyed. That's why millions of them got killed and sold into slavery and everything else and scattered all over the world. That's why Masada was destroyed. And every the king himself making, he speaks out against Caesar. He said, he told you he's king. You said he's king. Well, he's not Caesar's friend. He's speaking against Caesar. You're, you're, you're causing the people to go astray from Caesar. We're going to tell on you. We're going to tell on you. 193 to 1913. All right, that's what we got. Do you have any questions? 193 through 13. Did you learn something today? There's a lot in the Word of God when you look at it in great detail. <coughs> we'll look at some more this next week. No questions. You got any questions? No? No? Adriana, no questions? Chance? No? No questions. Roger, you've probably got a question that I can't answer. How about you, Sonia? No? Pamela? No. Oh. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for one more class that you allowed me to teach. I pray that it goes out all over the world and people will be glorified that people will be encouraged by this that it will glorify your son all I can do is brag on my Jesus because I love him because he saved my soul no way in this world could I ever make it to heaven without him Father thank you for what you did so many years ago I thank you that that my savior went through all of this pain and suffering to save me and everyone that will believe. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to teach this class tonight and preach it. Glorify you one more time. In Jesus' name, we ask you to be with us as we go out. Help us to do something eternal. Help us to bring glory to you tonight and for this next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.